Alright guys, welcome to another UK Scale and Crawler video. Um, as you can see, I've got new specs, so I can now see. Woohoo! Um, I've got new specs, so I can now see. Alright, today I've got new specs, so I can now see. Woohoo! Alright, today's video is basically about this. Um, how can I put it? It started off life as a Maverick Scout. Um, and yeah, I didn't want a Maverick Scout, I wanted another scaler, so hence why it's now turning into another scaler slowly but surely. Um, so the main part of the video is going to be how to put all the internals out of an SCX-10 axle into the rear one and then we're going to try and see if it works in the front I'm not sure whether it does or not yet but you'll soon find out um, but yeah I know it works in the rear because the back of it's running full SCX-10 so it's got in the rear it's got the long half shafts in where the pin just goes straight through um, it's also running lockout so instead of it having all the steering bar and all that lot on it with the stupid knuckles and stuff like what the front's got it's now completely locked on the rear so I'm gonna have a wee little go and see if it work in the front but I'm gonna strip the front axle down and show you how to do the rear one on the front before I do the front one you'll know what I mean anyway or you'll see what I mean so give us a couple of minutes last thing you want to see is me popping the bloody axle off a car so it's not hard it's only four screws um so give us say a couple of minutes and i'll jump back and i'll have the front axle in my hand and then we'll start working and i'll show you how to do it all right see you in a minute all right you're all right guys welcome back i need to get all that out of the way because that's no longer needed right um so there's my standard maverick scout axle as you can see now you've got four bolts in there and you take them out you got one on the back here which holds the three link on which will be that bit or four link so take that one out so you can pull that off then you've got one in either side of your c hubs there and there if you can see and then in the front here and in the front there once you've undone all of them you should be able to pull that side off and then to pull that side off as well and there's your wheels and your steering knuckles and everything out of the way this also applies to the rear axle um, apart from you won't have to take the steering plate off the rear axle you don't on the front either but yeah anyway so once you've done that you're taking all the bolts out your axle will split up like that um, as you can see it's got no grease or nothing in it um, it's got a little bit of dust because uh, the car was run for well the guy who got it off um, ran the rig for about about 20 minutes altogether in my back garden and that's it and then he just never bothered using it anymore so it's still like new um, all the drive shafts are still like new and blah 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 so yeah anyway so to just sort this bit out basically the main part of this is to change the locker inside here because the locker in this is plastic and it's awful and I don't like having plastic lockers so yeah anyway so Split your half, split that out, and then you can get rid of the case. Just put that off to one side. Then you should be able to pull that shaft out and pull this shaft out, and then that'll give you your diff. Now, to open a diff up, it's four screws on the back of the ring here. There, 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 and there. And you can see them. So, hopefully, this screwdriver will fit. Yeah, it does. Well, sort of. <laughs> Tell you what, give us one minute. I'm gonna go and get back. Get the good old fast tracks driver out. That'll do the job. So on the back, you need to take out these four screws, which is a bit of a pig to do on camera. So pull these out, and then inside this, I'll show you the plastic locker, and then I'll show you what you need to do to drill it out to fit an axial one, which will be a steel one. Good old steel locker, there's not a chance that you're going to strip that out, or not in a hurry anyway. Um, incidentally, you can use the GCM last lockers as well. Um, the GCM last locker is just this piece, and it has grub screws in the top which hold your half shafts in. So, here's a bit of information for you. I'll just do it this way because I can see what I'm doing, it's a bit quicker for you. Saves on another 45 minute long bloody video on how to do, how to change it. 
Not to change your locker or not to change your shafts or something. Right. Once you've undone all four screws at the back, you'll be able to take your ring gear and your bearing off. And then you can see the stupid idea that Maverick had for sticking in a plastic locker. Now what we're going to do is we're going to get rid of that locker, which is part of the housing. So we're going to have to drill it out, but we're going to put that one in. Good old axial, axial steel one. So we put that in and then we won't have no problems with the shafts going. So, to drill that out, you can either start off with a 5mm drill bit, send it down, and then get a 6mm drill bit, send that down, and get a 7mm drill bit, and send that down, and just spend all day messing about. Or, you can get what you would normally use for boring a hole in a piece of wood, i.e. to stick like... Like your aspen, aspen pinions or whatever they're called, the things you stick on the back gate in your garden and bolts into the door. Well, you get one of these. Now that's a size 13, as it says on it. And funnily enough, it fits perfectly down there without taking the rest of the case out. So, you get one of these. Don't do it on your wife's glass table. Don't do it on your mum's worktop. Don't do it anywhere apart from a random piece of wood that you're never going to use again. So yeah, you get your drill, get your drill bit. You hold this down or clamp it. I'm just going to hold it, and then you line your drill up square with this, obviously with this in your drill, and then send it down, and it'll cut all that out. Now, when you're cutting it out, you want to make sure that you only go down. I don't know whether you can see or not on the bottom of this. Got like four little pieces that hold out to try and strengthen the locker up and you send this down you want to go down just so where you just take the bottom of them off so there's nothing in there at all it's completely flat and um, so i'll go and do that off camera and then if you give us a couple of seconds i'll be back and it'll be done then we're back so once you drilled it out it'll look like that i've got nothing in the base of it now um so then you get axial locker and give it a good old push and then it goes see so once you've got the axial locker in uh, yeah it's alright yeah so once the axial locker's in you then want to put that back on or put your ring gear back on tighten that up and then once you tighten that up we're then going to start fitting shafts so bear with us one minute while I put all the massively long screws back in this and then I'll show you what else you need to do so, as you can now see, it's got the axial locker in it, and I've just finished greasing up the gears, well, the teeth on the gears anyway. Um, so, next thing to show you is, now this is an old set, obviously, of rear drive shafts, but the rear drive shafts for the SCX-10, if you look, that's the longest out of the two scout, oh, do it that way, right. There's the two scout drive shafts, yeah? As you can see, there's one long one, one short one. You get rid of that. Right? That is a standard SCX-10 one. For the rear. Now, you can physically see that it's massive compared to that. Now, the reason for this is because I'll put the part number somewhere in the video. I'll probably put it about now. Um, yeah, the part number. Basically... These drive shafts will fit inside and go onto the locker. So then you've now got a straight drive shaft on the rear. So then when you put this over, if I can get it right way up, which way does that go? That way. So when you put that over, you'll put a bearing on the end here. And once the bearing's on, you can then slide the diff or slide the locker on. Like, so it actually locks that central, so you don't get any flex. Whereas, if you run in the standard scout, you've got this on the back, 
so it flexes about and moves. So once you've got the locker on the end, your axle will then look like that. So I don't know whether you can see or not, but the locker itself will slide on over the standard shaft and then it all works fine. I'll just spin that, I'll spin the gearbox. It's all still nice and smooth, there's no binding, no nothing like that. So that's how you put the lockers on. Uh, incidentally, when you are putting the rear lockouts on, what you need to do as well, if you look on the casing, you see how far this sticks out, where your screw hole normally goes. Well, get a little exacto knife or a Dremel or something, and just cut that so it sits flush with the with this part of the casing. And as soon as that sits flush, the lock your lockout will slide on, and then you'll need a two mil drill bit, and you drill through the hole on the lockout. And as you drill through the hole on the lockout, it then make its own hole in the housing here, about somewhere about there. And then you can use the standard scout screws to bolt the lockouts on. So then you've then got a locked rear axle. Um, but the other part of this video, so we can get rid of that, we don't need that, is to see whether or not we can run Axial SCX10 front drive shafts. So I'm hoping we can with a bit of luck. Well, that seems to fit. Question is, does the other side fit into the same point? Um, well, yeah, that's inconclusive. Yeah, you can run Axial SCX10 drive shafts as well by the looks of it. So uh, give us a couple of minutes. I'm just going to get this built up so I can guarantee you it's going to work. Um. But looking at that, the bearings are sitting in the same place. Um, and they sit out just as far as well. So, we'll give it a wee test, Will. Give us a minute, I'll get this built back up, and then I'll let you know how we get on. Okay. Oh, I just thought while I'm building this up, I may as well just fast it forward through, might I? So, yeah, I may as well just leave it recording as the saying goes. But by the looks of it, this is going to work. Um, if I turn the prop... It's all spinning nice and free and smooth. So, providing that these will fit into the standard cups, we're laughing. <laughs> well, uh, I'm quite happy to say that the only thing left inside this that scout now is the housing and it's not running the stupid lockers no more um, and also the half shafts it's not got the scout ones in the scout ones the pin tends to slide out after a little bit of use the pin will slide itself out and I know the SCX10 ones don't so I've now got an SC or two SCX10 axles basically um, so yeah it works so we've just finished chucking all the screws in and then I'll give you a wee little look over it. Just bear with us one minute while I chuck these screws in quick. So your next mission is now as well is to see if the SCX10 knuckles will fit. Um, if the SCX10 knuckles will fit 
then they're going on as well because the stock SCX10 knuckles are stronger than the Scout ones. Um, and it'll also give me a fair bit more steering angle. But I'm not sure whether I'm going to need to put different C hubs on for it to accept the knuckles. But only one way to find out, and that would be to do it. So I'll just finish getting these screws in quick, make sure they're in tight. And still no problems with that axle. I'm proper made up that that's worked. Because not only is my scout going to be epically strong now, but so is everyone else's who's out there who's been having the problems with the pins going. And now you know all you need is a set of SCX10 shafts for the front and rear. And a pair of lockers. Um, if you go on to RC Bits on eBay, um, Martin does the lockers for £12, if you remember correctly. Um, that's for two as well. So all you got to do is drill your axle housings out. Uh, drill the old locker out, put the new locker in. And then it saves you all the messing about of having to grind down the ends of these shafts. Because as you can see, I'm going to spin the prop shaft. It's all nice and smooth and it works fine. And on the rear, it's exactly the same. All you do is just put them shafts in. And then lo and behold, even the st even the bearings that come in the scout axle are the same size as the ones that's in the axial axle. Well, the same inner diameter is what you need for the axial ones. So, that sloppy noise is just that prop shaft because it's fucked. Pardon my French. But, yeah, so it works. And it works well. So, I'm just going to see if I can fit these SCX10 knuckles on. Um, bear with us a second. I'll just pause video. Um, I Well, <coughs> sorry about taking so long. Well, you won't even know that, but I've been on the phone for about an hour and a half. Um, been talking to Gareth Clement for a bit, so uh, while I was talking to him, I got a bit carried away and put the axle back on. Um, well, the well, easiest way of putting it, it all works. Um, inside the axle, it's now got a axial HD locker in it. Um, and then it's also got the axial um, drive shafts as well, or the half shafts. Uh, and we're also now running um, axial uh, knuckles as well. They're only plastic ones for now, but just while I got it all marked up. Um, the axial knuckles have give it more steering angle than what the Scout ones had, a lot more steering angle. Um, camera might not do it justice, but it's definitely got loads more steering angle. Um, and yeah, everything's working. It's all nice and smooth. It's running sweet. Um, there's virtually no play. Um, so yeah, win-win situation. I've now got Scout housings with the Scout ring and pinion gear on them. Um, and then... Everything else in the, in the axles is axial now. So it's going to be strong. It's not going to die. Um, and yeah, it's well worth doing. Uh, you, As I said at the start of the video, you know you will find with the Maverick Scout axles that the locker that's inside the axle will wear out quite easily. Um, you've only got to get mildly, well, what, mildly um, caught up on something. As soon as you do, that's it. Wave bye-bye to it. So, now that it's got axial stuff in it, there's not a chance that's going to happen. So, I'm a happy man. Um, I've, all I need to do now is I've got to make my battery plate, which is going to go across the chassis here. Um, in fact, I've already got a battery plate. Uh, Dino, a good mate of mine, sending me one out, uh, out of carbon fibre. So, I'm going to show you how to do the mod to put your battery plate across here. Uh, and I need to put the electronics in, which is... Probably they're going to sit up round about there on the front end, or I might even stick them in the back yet. Um, incidentally, while I think on as well, 
Uh, I got these shocks from Hobby King. Uh, they're a hundred mil. Uh, they've now got Wraith springs on them as well. Um, and yeah, they really nice. They're nice and smooth. Um, they come pre-filled with oil and they've got bladders in as well. Uh, I would suggest sticking thirty-five weight oil, maybe even forty in them, because at the minute, as you can see, there are, there's no well, no real resistance on the oil. So I'm going to be changing that out to thirty-five weight. Uh, and I've got Intergy bumper on it and Intergy winch, which is running. The winch has now got a RC four wheel drive bulldog gearbox in it. So hopefully that's gonna last. Uh, and yeah, it's got one of my SCX ten link kits on that I make and sell. If you have a look on eBay and just type in Land Rover D ninety link kit. Yeah, this is one of them kits, but I've had to make mild adjustments to it because it's running a different body. But I've sold a fair few of them, a fair few of them kits now, and people seem to be liking them. So, um, I'm also looking at getting some MIP props as well because I'm not happy with these at all. These were completely destroyed. He used to run these on the Hilux before I got the MIPs for it, so they're just for markup purposes, as the same would go. Um, motor wise it's going to be running a GT5500 um, motor out of the uh, HPIE Savage uh, I'm probably going to go with a 22 pinion and it's going to be running 3S as well so she's going to have shed loads of torque and a fair old bit of wheel speed as well um, and I've just got a that's a Maverick Scout gearbox at the minute when you're fitting the gearbox if you want to convert your Maverick Scout into, let's say, a scaler, um, you can buy the chassis for, I think this chassis was about £25 or £30 on eBay. Um, came with all the links, came with all the shock hoops, all the braces, everything, the, the transmission mount underneath, like the gearbox mount, come with all that. Um, and then since having it, I've then put my own links on. I've bought a new set of shocks. Um, and then the, like, the front rear bumper mounts, I had them laying around. I'd, but Luke gave me the bumper. Um, to be honest with you, this whole roller at the minute has cost me, what, I dare say about, what, how many did I have to buy now, have I? Where to buy for it? A set of shocks, which was a tenner. And that's it, and then the links which I made myself. So yeah, uh, basically that's what's going on with this. Um, as you now know, it's got axial internals in, so it's not going to die. So that's win-win situation, if I'm concerned, or as far as I'm concerned. Um, if you need any more information on how to modify a Maverick Scout up to being like this, uh, just give us a shout and I'll send you links or... No, I'll help you out as much as I can. Um, have a look at the Facebook page, UK Scale and Crawler, Forum and Trade. Um, that's our Facebook page for doing all this. And uh, we've also got the forum as well. Don't forget about the forum. You need to go on and check that out. There's plenty of good build threads, or really good build threads on there. Um, at the minute, there's a guy doing a 6x6 Russian missile launcher truck thing. Um, so he's doing one of them uh, and then there's Adam Meller who's one of the moderators on there he's doing all kinds of builds uh, he's doing a couple of cage builds and things like that and he's doing a, a Ultra 4 build as well um, obviously over the next week or so this will be going up there up to the stage it's at now so yeah have a look at the forum if you go on the description box there'll be a link in there it'll say forum and then UKSC.org that'll take you straight through so get signed up to that. And yeah, thank you very much for watching. Share this around most of or a lot of the communities um, on Facebook and that as well. There's a lot of people who are running Maverick Scouts who are rounding out the lockers and then you, you're stuffed. Whereas at least if you do this, you're not going to kill them. So <coughs> yeah, jump onto Facebook and share it around. Make sure you hit the subscribe button on the video for me as well. It's somewhere around here i think it's down there still um click that and mash the like button as well because the like button always helps i enjoy it when people click like on my videos now if you don't like it then click dislike that doesn't matter either but it's always nice when people are clicking like on your videos it makes you know you're doing something right 
So if you've got 30 seconds, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button. Nice one. I'll see you all in the next one. Thanks, guys. Bye.